Good morning, folks. We kick off with a 6.2 earthquake in Iran. The downgrade took it to 6.0, but we should keep an eye on that region as the aftershocks are numerous enough to indicate possible further tension. By the way, this is the USGS's new earthquake map slash list. 300,000 people live in the drought disaster zone in Angola, with no end in sight. Just south of that, a meteorite crashed to the ground that was visible and audible from hundreds of kilometers away. If you are interested in learning more about that coolant leak at the ISS, today at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, the NASA channel will update the situation. There are at least 16 galaxies in this photo, but two really stand out. They are colliding in the center. This is courtesy of Hubble. NOAA has laid out the Climate Data Center's plan to take ownership of weather monitoring and climate tracking. It's not a bad read. For the top weather story today, we have Jamala headed west while Cyclone 1 is set to make a mess. I'm coming to the weather underground today because their tropical storm tracking is good in that they allow you to toggle temperature and temperature anomaly. See how much warmer Cyclone 1's waters are? This is headed straight for Myanmar, Bangladesh, Eastern India. Be prepared if you live there, folks. This is predicted to be a major level cyclone event. Central Australia, highest chance of thunderstorms here in the next 12 hours. These cells are really lighting up the skies over the Mediterranean coastlines. And in the U.S., that convergence shifts eastward tonight. And I can tell you it got pretty harsh yesterday in Ohio, so check your local forecast this evening. Looking at the solar wind, the speed in yellow is fading for a second straight day. No other strong metrics leave us quiet on the flux gate with no plasma penetration and an induction magnetometer clean as a whistle. Looking at the three-day GOES flare monitor, you can see the M flare we showed yesterday morning, but caught another one midday and I caught him in the act. Caused a very brief but bona fide radio propagation degradation event over the Atlantic and it came out of the same spot that popped before turning into view. Let's check another spot first though. Not the biggest, second, or third on the disc, but it's got the magnetics and if this starts growing could be big by tomorrow. Coming back to the northeastern limb where this monster spot is, it showed up popping M flares, but so far this morning has gone shy since catching Earth in her periphery. Two eruptions of note yesterday. First one headed off the backside of the sun, a massive CME, one of the ones you don't want to see coming our way. You can see on the Soho Lasco C2, even with all that ejecta headed away from us, so much plasma was released that a large amount failed to escape the sun, headed back down to the surface. By the way, that's Mercury headed in to conjoin the sun there. Now the second eruption of note was dead center disk facing Earth. The AIA-193 reveals the small ejection, but you should be able to see it on stereo B going right faintly before the larger eruption comes off the left and misses Earth. We'll watch it again for the smaller CME going to the right. Nothing to worry about though. Gong shows that umbra openings will close up from facing Earth today only for green to give way to red later next week. The filament we have monitored on the northern edge has lifted and gone. I'll leave you with some various shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.50 a.m. Eastern time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.